Whenever I do a video looking at the latest figures from Stan Solo Creations, I find myself saying the same thing over and over, and that is, where Kenner messed up in the 80s, Stan Solo not only corrects those mistakes, but really improves on them. So stay tuned to find out what I think of the latest Stan Solo Creations figures, and I'll explain why Chris and John at Stan Solo have forced me into buying some Hasbro Vintage Collection. Welcome back, and before we go any further, I want to send out a huge thank you to both Chris and John at Stan Solo Creations for allowing me to look at these figures and make this whole thing possible. Now, as I said in the intro, Kenner often gave us some questionable choices as far as the figures were concerned, both in terms of the figures they gave us, which looked nothing like the characters on screen, and also the omission of some really important characters. Well, once again, Stan Solo Creations have come through and they have given us the correct rendition of Han Solo's nemesis, Greedo. So, let's take a look at what Stan Solo Creations have done in terms of Greedo and how it stacks up against the original. So, as you all know, Kenner gave us a version of Greedo that had this really wacky sort of green leotard type thing with knee-high boots and all in all, whilst as kids we accepted this was Greedo, when you watch the film, he was nothing like the character we saw on screen. But now we have from Stan Solo the perfect screen accurate Greedo figure. Now in terms of the head sculpt, it is pretty much the same as we got from Kenner. Just different sort of painting on the eyeballs which makes it far more accurate looking. But all in all, I'm really glad they kept the same head sculpt, but it's the body where everything changes. This is pretty much exactly as we saw Greedo on screen, complete with the orange waistcoat. He even has the bell and the holster for his blaster, which I should mention is a bespoke blaster unique to this one character, whereas, you know, Kenner just used a sort of hand blaster for a lot of figures. This version from Stan Solo gets a more accurate looking blaster. And I always say this, but it's just amazing how in 2023 Stan Solo Creations are able to produce these figures as if they were made back in the late 70s. It really is an uncanny technique and I'm so glad that Stan Solo Creations are doing these figures for us. Now, one of my favorite features of this figure is the fact that they maintained a very good gripping hand. Now, as you know, a lot of Kenner figures had problems holding their weapons. Greedo was not one of those. His hand was perfectly sculpted, but Kenner opted to give Greedo the good hand on his left arm, where in the movie, he was in fact right-handed. So now, Stancil of Creations have put the good gripping hand on the correct arm, which really does make things so much more screen accurate. But all in all, if you are a fan of Star Wars and Kenner Star Wars figures, you really do need to get this in your collection because it does put the Kenner version to shame. As much as I love my Kenner version, that is the original, that's the figure I had it as a kid. This right here is the ultimate vintage style Greedo figure. Now, not only is he available loose, he's available in two different card backs. So let's take a look at these card backs. So first up, we have Greedo on a Star Wars card back. Now it's worth noting that the image on Stan Solo's card back was not the image Kenner used. I think this is a far better image and it does show Greedo with the correct colors and the sort of orange waistcoat right there. Now on the back is a 21 card back. We have some of the uh, play sets and creatures that were available at the time. And if anyone is stupid enough to think this came from the 70s, it does say Stan Solo on the back, so nobody's there. Now the second edition that Stan Solo have given us 
is a Power of the Force version complete with collector's coin. And this is absolutely stunning. Now, unlike the original Star Wars card back where the figure is loose inside the bubble, this has been done Power of the Force style where there is an inlay tray and it really does look like it came from 1985. The coin itself is adding some real weight to the card back. Again, a different image used. This is just a stunning piece. And if you are an on-card collector, I would highly recommend getting this to add to your collection. Now, on the back, we have all 92 of the figures. Of course, 92 because they are missing Yak Face which was how Kenner did it back in the day. But once again, it says there, as bold as you like, that this is from Stan Solo. Now, I wonder how these anti-repro folks feel about this, because obviously this version of Greedo was never produced by Kenner, so this is not what you would call reproduction. So given that they have this real problem with Chris and Stan Solo as a whole, these clowns are really missing out on these wonderful carded items. But for me, the loose figure will absolutely fit seamlessly into my vintage Kenner Star Wars collection. So there you go. That is Greedo loose, Greedo on a Star Wars card back, and Greedo on a Power of the Force card back. As I've said before, Kenner did omit a number of pretty important characters from their figure line. I would say the main one being Grand Moff Tarkin, but the Rebel Fleet Trooper was the first human we saw in the Star Wars movie, and they played a pretty big part in that opening scene. Well, thankfully, Chris at Stansel the Creations has finally given us the vintage Kenner-style Rebel Fleet Trooper. Let's take a look at this guy and see what he's all about. So as you can see here, as the figure spins on by, this is exactly how Kenner would have done this figure had it been made back in the late 70s. And as always, it's amazing how not only does it look like a Kenner figure, it actually feels like a Kenner figure. Now obviously, I can't portray that on camera, but trust me, this feels exactly like a classic vintage Kenner figure. Now I do love the fact that unlike the majority of classic vintage Kenner figures, he has two usable hands, which is ideal for a troop builder figure like this, which means when posing them, you can elect whether to use the right hand or the left hand to hold the blaster. Speaking of which, again, is a bespoke blaster to this figure. So it's not as if he's sharing blaster is the way the Kenner figures often shared the same blaster. This is unique to this figure. But all in all, I am just impressed with the, with the detailing on the helmet. He's even got a small uh, antenna. I don't know if that's coming through on camera, but it is there. And it really does take me back to childhood, even though this was a figure I never had. Holding a figure of this type in my hand does bring back some really, really wonderful childhood memories. And I am so happy to finally add this figure to my collection. Now, in addition to coming loose, he also comes carded. So let's take a look at the carded version of the Rebel Fleet Trooper. Just looking at this figure on the card back, despite never being released back in the late 70s, early 80s, Seeing it like this does bring back a lot of wonderful childhood memories for me. And they've chosen the perfect image for the Rebel Fleet Trooper there. There's a pair of them, one crouched, one standing, and yes, vintage 5 POA figures cannot crouch. That is not a problem because to me, 5 POA is the only number of articulation points a figure needs because as a kid, that's what I grew up with. That's what I like, that's what I expect. But seeing it right here, what a wonderful representation of a character that Kenner never gave us. And again, on the back, it's a 21 card back, same as the Greedo figure. And again, for anyone who gets upset about this kind of stuff, it does say Stan Solo on the back. Now, keep watching this video because I will now demonstrate how both Chris and John have forced me 
into supporting Hasbro's vintage collection line. No, your eyes do not deceive you. Yes, this is some Hasbro vintage collection in my possession. Let me explain. So upon receiving my package from John, courtesy of Chris, um, there were more Rebel Fleet Troopers than I was expecting. And I thought to myself, you know what? These would look great in the 10 to 4 corridor. This here playset. So I went onto Amazon. It was about $30. I figured, okay, I'll pay 30 bucks for this and I will sell the God awful vintage collection figure and get some money back for that. So maybe when all is said and done, this thing might have cost me 20 bucks. I will show you it's set up momentarily, but on the subject of vintage collection, this, I absolutely hate the vintage collection. Now I know there are people who love this line and that is great. For me, I hate the fact that they opted to use the classic card back style that I remember from my childhood for a figure that is just overly articulated. I think this guy looks ridiculous. His face is just so long, he's got a weird expression, all the extra accessories, none of this means anything to me. I am all about 5p away with very simple accessories and in my opinion Hasbro kind of jumped the gun here. They should have kept the name Vintage Collection for what is now Retro Collection and called this garbage something else and be done with it. But as it is, this is of no value to me. This will be getting sold to try and offset the cost of this. But let's see how Stan Solo's classic Rebel Fleet Troopers look set up in this display. So that was a look there at my Hasbro slash Kenner slash Stan Solo Creations diorama. And I'm sure you will agree that that looks like a really nice diorama combining modern with vintage. And for me, that will take pride of place in my display. But please do let me know in the comments, what do you think of Stan Solo's latest offerings? And do you agree with my stance that Hasbro's vintage collection just is crap. The figures look terrible, they're way over articulated and they should have kept the name vintage collection for what is now the retro collection. So I've left a link in my description for the Stan Solo Creation stores, both US and UK, should you wish to get these figures for yourself. And as always, thank you so much for watching please do leave a like. It takes you a millisecond to click that thumbs up. It's not that difficult, people. Just do it. Please share the video. Make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for more videos from All Things 80s.